Well, if you remember, yesterday I read the Wells Bequest. Now, the thing is, the Wells Bequest is named after a very particular author. And of course, the book itself is based on a very particular science fiction book. And I decided that it was time I revisited it after a couple years of not reading it. Hello, fellow Bequesters! It is I, RMD Bequester, so today I have this awesome science fiction book ahead of its time by Massive Proportions, the Time Machine Classic Stars, retold from the H.G. Wells original book, and well, let's get right, into, right on to it. So, basically, the Time Machine is about a character named the Time Traveler. It is, it is basically narrated by a character who learns the story from the Time Traveler and basically relates the story to us. The basic storyline is, the Time Traveler makes a Time Machine, he travels Far, far into the future, um, eight hundred to seven o one, yeah, from one thousand eight hundred ninety five. That's quite the distance. And there he meets two. Con he finds out that humans have split into two. The rich and wealthy who lived on the surface of the world became Eloy, who were peaceful, gentle, but didn't know how to work or think or write. And Morlocks, creatures, people, poor people who had worked in the mines and underground without ever seeing the light of the sun again, became almost animal-like creatures, only compelled by their instinct to take, well, to take care of the Eloi. But it was only because they had been doing doing so for thousands and thousands of years, and not because they felt any sort of a, affection for the Eloi. Wow. And basically, there's a couple problems, like the Morlocks taking his time machine, befriending the Aloy, and then taking back the time machine, traveling even further into the future where the Earth doesn't even turn on its axes, then of course, coming back to his own time, then he says that he'll go and find some proof, get actual evidence, and he leaves, and it says that that is the story of three years ago, and the time traveler hasn't come back. Another mysterious ending for a mysterious science fiction book. That is re the really, really 10 second version of the entire story, but like I said, it is a kind of simple book, so there isn't much to say about it. Today, I'm really more here to say what, uh, what about the Wall's Bequest and the time machine is related. So, first off, as I already mentioned, the Wells Bequest section of the repository is named after H.G. Wells, one of the most famous science fiction writers of all time. His writing was so ahead of his time that one of his most famous works, which is, I think, a evening in Paris in some random, very far away year, that was published decades after he passed away, so yeah, least to say, his work was really ahead of its time. And basically, the Wells Bequest section has all like the science fiction stuff in it, like for example, the Shrink Ray, um, the Nautilus, you know, the submarine from 800,000 leagues below the sea, I believe the boat, I mean 20,000 leagues under the sea, this book is here. I read only half of it because I'm getting kind of bored of it, but I'll finish it soon enough. And anyway, it is all in all a very, very interesting section of the repository and is named after H.G. Wells who wrote The Time Machine. And of course, um, the entire plot devised in the Wells Bequest is basically after a small minor detail in The Time Machine. Basically, the the Time Traveler has a little model time machine, a little tiny one about this, about this big, and he travels it through the future. And, and, be and because that model is working, Leo and Jaya, who are the main characters in the Wells Bequest, decides that if they go to the Time Traveler's house, go there and stop time even for a split second, they will be able to grab the model time machine and get out of there. And of course, they have a shrink ray. So they could literally just, you know, shrink themselves and then get in the time machine and use it to travel back into time, which is absolutely perfect. Of course, the actual model of the time machine is already in the repository, 
but it's currently non-working. It's not working right now because because for unknown reasons. Let's just leave it at that. And I love how these minor details, like about the model, about the model time machine, like and stopping time. It's just very complicated science fictiony stuff. And I love how Paul and Showman pulled that those little details out of this classic book and implemented it into her own storyline, which was so witch-filled and so good. So that's pretty much all I have to say. Um, the time machine in the Wells Bequest is so well described, and sometimes I just feel like. In our minds, in our modern minds, we think of time machines as some sort of, it look, kind of looks like a submarine, it travels through time, it looks like a rocket plus submarine plus something else entirely. But in this book, it's a carriage plus bicycle plus something and something. I mean, it's, very, it's a very medieval concept. But the idea of traveling through time, well that was really, and I've been saying this so many times this entire video, ahead of its time. And of course, future writers like Paul Showman and The Wells Bequest takes advantage of that, and in very, very creative ways of her own. And like always, your book quester, I run the book quester. I know it wasn't a proper review of The Time Machine, but I believe most people read this book. I mean, it's not that long. It has a pretty cool storyline. Please read it if you haven't read it yet. It's a classic after all. And do not read the walls because before you read this book. There's really no point. Read the source before you read the adaptations. Always rule. Goodbye. Have a great day.